Good morning, all. Another technology item. Uh, this time it's a 10 port USB wall charger uh, by Orky. Orky have sent this in. Thanks very much to Orky. Uh, 10 ports. <laughs> That's really a sign of the times, isn't it? Family of five, each with two devices. You could conceivably need to charge all 10 devices at the same time. Uh, this one has Qualcomm Quick Charge 3 capability on two of the ports, these two orange ones here. The other four, I think, are standard USB. Now, I've been sort of thinking about this since it's come in. I've not opened it, so I don't know anything for sure. But um, 2.4 amps, are we thinking, on each port? Now, if you're running all 10 at the same time, that's 24 amps. So how are they providing the 24 amps? This is a mains powered device. Does it have an internal power supply, five volts, 24 amps? Or does it have an external power brick, five volts, 24 amps? What kind of connector is that gonna use? Or have they gone for a higher voltage external power supply? Okay, internal or external power supply. Let's take a look. Ah, it looks like it's probably external, so it's probably sitting in there. No, it's just a cable. Ah, interesting. Some uh, blanking, coloured blanking plugs for unused ports, maybe. And what's that? That's just a micro USB uh, connector and the device. So the power supply must be in here. So this is going to have to come apart. OK, so there are some markings here. Uh, these are the Quick Charge 3 ports. Now on the back, uh, it doesn't look like there are any screws unless they're under these feet. So I suppose I'm going to have to rip these feet off. Now there are some clues on the back here. Output AI power. So that's presumably the auto uh, switching, the auto sensing of, of what device you've plugged in for maximum uh, current. But it says here DC 5 volts, 14 amps, not 24 amps, each port 2.4 amps max. So it looks like you can't uh, drive all 10 ports at 2.4 amps. I assume if you plug in 10 devices, it will um, automatically reduce the current. But 14 amps is still fairly healthy, but not 24 amps. Now here it says output quick charge 3 times 2. And there are some ranges here, 3.6 volts to 6.5 volts, 3 amps, 6.5 to 9 volts, 2 amps, and 9 volts to 12 volts, 1.5 amps. Now, I remember the Quick Charge 2 system used either 9 volts or 12 volts. This looks like it's probably uh, the same, but it gives these voltages as ranges, which is quite interesting. And also, this one is quite a low voltage, 3.6 to 6.5. So we'll certainly have to look at the Quick Charge 3 spec. And uh, yes, the screws are underneath the little self-adhesive feet. So let's get these screws out and see how easily this box comes apart. OK, it was a little bit tricky getting the uh, bottom cover off. Now, interestingly, these uh, plastic walls here run up through these separation slots. Um, Yes, they're shaped, aren't they? That one's fed back a bit, which is shaped to fit in there. So there's some separation provided by uh, plastic walls running up through those slots. So let's get this board out and have a look at what's either side of those slots on the other side. So I'm having some difficulty here getting this out. I can leave a one side out and I assume it must slide that way for the switch and the mains socket to sort of come out of the unit. But it doesn't seem to want to come out yet, so I'll keep working on that. Now the main switch here, the mains on off switch, um, the two pins are angled and come up onto the board here, but there's a cut out there. So I've got a funny feeling that the way this is assembled is that the board is placed in uh, over this and those two pins stick through this hole then it slid to the right, and then these two points soldered on afterwards. So I think I'm going to have to desolder these in order to get the uh, module out. So I'm going to do that now. Now, while I wait for the soldering iron to warm up, there are a few bits and pieces on here 
Um, but it's all heavily gunked over with this sort of, um, I don't know, conformal coating, is it? It's black by the look of it. Um, there's a four pin device here which looks like an opto isolator. And there's something here which I've never seen before. It's a, well, it looks like an eight pin chip with only seven pins. There's a pin missing there and there's no, it's not been cut off or anything. It's a very peculiar seven pin, eight pin chip. Right, the board is out. Uh, this is where the switch goes. It just fits in that slot and the legs slide up into those two notches, which is a real pain to take the thing apart, but uh, it is apart. Now these channels are where the plastic um, sort of gates come up and I presume it's because the low voltage uh, USB stuff is sitting fairly close to mains potential stuff and so as well as the slots they've actually got um, these plastic walls that come up. So what can we see? Well besides the uh, mains input connector there's a device here which says uh, T 3.15 amps 250 volts so that's a fuse, a time delay fuse uh, I'm pretty sure the T means. Uh, that's kind of soldered in so not replaceable with uh, without some difficulty. There's an NTC uh, device here that's a negative temperature coefficient I think. I don't think it's a mob, I think it's some sort of um, heat dependent resistor. I'm not entirely sure about that. A uh, big capacitor here rated for 105 degrees centigrade which is probably a good thing because it's bonded to one of the heat sinks here which is slightly curious. Um, there are some LF devices, let's have a look at that. Got LF1, which I think is meant to be line filter one, so that's a couple of pieces of wire. And we've got LF2, line filter two is also a couple of pieces of wire. Uh, here there is a bridge rectifier, it's a four terminal sort of black device attached to the heat sink. It's marked DB1, diode bridge one. Now there's a massive, uh, well not massive physically, but it has massive wires. This transformer here, the output is on these huge fat cables. So uh, I assume that's the secondary. The secondary is a, an enormous winding. And that's of course for the 14 amps of current. You can see the uh, bottoms of those two wires here. Um, a whole load of capacitors here, electrolytics and uh, these, uh, some sort of polymer thing. I can't quite remember what the name is. Aluminium, something or other. There's a massive link here. Uh, which says RS1, so I think that's a sense resistor to sense current, but it's very, very thick. A couple of inductors here. It looks like there's one per Quick Charge 3 port, and there's a chip per Quick Charge 3 port. Um, I'm guessing this is the clever chip that does the Quick Charge 3 clever stuff, and then there's a third chip here. So we'll take a look at the numbers of those. Now next to each of the standard USB ports, there's one of these uh, little sort of five pin chips. Uh, oh, there are two actually by the look of it. Yeah, it looks like each port has two of these chips. Um, one or possibly both of them are going to be for the auto sense, um, which uh, communicates with the device that you plug in and then puts the necessary voltage levels if it's an Apple device or a short across the two inner pins, the data pins, which signals to the um, plugged in device how much current it can take and it's aiming to get the device to draw the maximum current. Now there's a device wedged in against uh, one of the heat sinks here and that has actually two uh, sort of discrete wires coming out of it and it's obviously some sort of a temperature sensor for uh, well, this main semiconductor, but it actually says on it 110 and then a little dot and then CA. Now is that 110 degrees Celsius? So back on the main side, um, we have CX1 here, which is not fitted. Is that an X class capacitor possibly? Now one of the chips uh, controlling standard USB um, the sense pins, the data pins, is an A63A, so I'm going to write that down, A63A, and then the other one, the best view is uh, just down here, 
Uh, and that's this device here, which looks like it's an 8302. So I think, yes, I think that one's an 8302. I'll write that down as well. And the chip uh, next to the quick charge ports looks like it's an SCO 1630, I think that is. Uh, what's that 1609? That can't be the date because that would be September 2016, which is tomorrow. So I don't think that can be the date. That might be the chip number, but maybe 1609 or maybe it's SCO 1630. Can't be sure about that. Let's try and get the number of this chip. And uh, this one looks like it's an RH8603. Now, the likelihood of getting data on any of these chips is fairly remote because they're all so new that um, you just can't find data sheets for, for these things. But if anyone can find data sheets, and I'll have a go, uh, that would be terrific. So that's RH8603D. Well, the RH8603D on a website called uboy.com uh, here it is. I can't find a translate button, but there's talk here of uh, 320 kilohertz and possibly a 100 milliohm MOSFET. So this is possibly uh, the boost converter to generate the high voltages uh, for the Qualcomm Quick Charge 3 system. I think that's what this is. Now, I can't find the other chip, the SCO 1630, but I've looked on the Qualcomm website and there's the thing introducing quick charge 3 and uh, there's some voltages here it says uh, quick charge 3 offers a more granular range of voltages 200 millivolt increments from 3.6 volts to 20 volts um, it doesn't look like the Orky device that I've got goes up to 20 volts because it only me uh, mentioned 9 to 12 um, as the highest voltage but that seems to be what it is let me see if there's some sort of diagram. No, no diagram, but it says here it's 100% backward compatible with Quick Charge 1 and Quick Charge 2, and it supports a broad range of connectors, uh, USB Type A, USB Micro, USB Type C, or proprietary connectors. Now I found a Qualcomm Quick Charge 3 uh, controller chip data sheet, and I don't think this NCP4371 is the one inside the Orky unit because the uh, part numbers don't match up. But this talks about um, a Quick Charge 3 high voltage dedicated charging port, an HVDCP, and having a Class A and Class B specification. And a little bit further down, it says that Class A is 3.6 to 12. Well, that appears to be what the Orky unit is using, and Class B is 3.6 volts up to 20 volts. And there's a little bit here on the way that HVDCP mode actually works. It says after power up, D plus and D minus are shorted with an impedance of, well, something very low, presumably, an internal reference voltage set to 5 volts. So the device is in a BC 1.2 compatible mode. So I assume USB compatible mode uh, of, of the dedicated charging port uh, spec. Then there's some sort of negotiation between the HVDCP and the PD, now I assume that's the device being charged. Once the negotiation is successful, it doesn't exactly say what it is, um, this chip opens D plus and D minus, uh, and D minus is pulled down with something or other, but that's how it all works. And then there's a little table um, up here talking about D plus and D minus being voltages 0.6, 3.3, combinations of 0.6 and 3.3, will give you these 12 volt, 9 volt, and even the 20 volt uh, different modes. And uh, then a bit further on, there's a flow chart, which shows that D plus and D minus are shorted initially. And then uh, we go through all these various different uh, modes where we might get 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, or 20 volts. And this is quite interesting at the bottom. We've got this uh, increment request, decrement request where uh, it goes VBUS is VBUS plus 200 millivolts. So it notches up in steps of 200 millivolts when there's an increment request and goes down in steps of 200 millivolts when there's a decrement request down to a minimum of 3.6 and up to a maximum of either 12 or 20, depending whether it's in class A or B. So, I mean, the question is, are we going to see quick charge four and then quick charge five? 
And what about USB type C? I think that has the ability to go up to these higher voltages uh, inherent in the USB standard. So maybe when everything goes USB type C, this whole quick charge technology will just sort of fizzle out. And then of course there's Apple Lightning. It's all very confusing these days. Right, so let's put the uh, board back into the box. The mains connector has to slide down. And then uh, the two prongs of the power switch have to somehow poke up through there. Yes, they have. Okay, so that's all back in place. I'm just going to have to solder that uh, switch back on. That really does make it very awkward to get into this unit. Try and get some uh, solder to flow down into there. Oh yeah, that's working fine. Oh, we need to flood quite a bit into there, it looks like. And this one. And this is only an on-off switch, if the worst comes to the worst. I'll just put a shorting link across it. So there it is, all back together. That's Orky's 10-port USB wall charger with a Qualcomm Quick Charge 3 technology. And uh, I've not even switched this thing on yet, have I? Cheerio.